Do all white people look the same? I turned on The Bachelorette the other day, and I found that the answer was yes, absolutely, at least the men. And then I looked at Instagram, and I decided that the answer was, oh, yeah, and also the women, too. Uh, but despite the jokes, and yes, despite the fact that plastic surgery trends allow people to mold themselves to look exactly the same, a keen eye can detect the difference between various white people. And the same is true for every other race of human. Despite what my elderly great aunt thinks, there are differences between Black Americans and Koreans and Italians. I mean, differences within those groups, though my great aunt also cannot distinguish between those groups. Because, you know, she's super racist. But wait, is my elderly great aunt really racist because she can't tell the difference between Salma Hayek and Penelope Cruz? Or is her inability to distinguish between these people due to biological means beyond her control? And she's racist because of all the other things that she thinks and says and does. Or is my elderly great aunt not racist at all because I actually made her up as a helpful example? And in fact, none of my relatives, racist or otherwise, live past their 50s. Really makes you think. Anyway, a new study offers some food for thought on this subject. Transcranial direct current stimulation, TDCS, eliminates the other race effect, ORE, indexed by the face inversion effect for own versus other race faces, published this month in Nature Scientific Reports. This paper presents a clever way to figure out whether my hypothetical great aunt's face blindness is nature or nurture, and that clever way is by giving subjects brain damage. Let me back up a bit. Back in the early 20th century, people noticed that it seemed that they were better at distinguishing between their own race's faces compared to the faces of people from other races. Psychologists tested this by showing test subjects photos of various people's faces and seeing how often people remembered when they had already seen a face before. And yeah, for the most part, they found that white people were better at identifying white faces that they had seen before, and the same was true for black people identifying black faces and other races as well. And at that point, many people thought, well, that's just racism, right? Just a socially constructed bias in which we favor our own race over others, and therefore we spend the extra energy to prioritize remembering them. And then in the 1960s, psychologists noticed a funny thing. When you show people faces that have been flipped upside down, the subjects take longer to recognize whether they'd seen them before. But the same was not true of objects that had been flipped upside down that were not faces. This became known as the face inversion effect, and it led to the discovery that there are specific parts of the human brain, like the fusiform face area, that are specifically tasked with recognizing human faces compared to recognizing objects or places. And so many researchers suspected that in general, when we view a face, our brain processes it configurally, meaning we don't just catalog the various parts, like here's what the nose looks like like, here's the color and shape of the eyes, or here's how high the cheekbones are. Instead, we look at how features relate to each other, and also how they differ from what we think of as a standard face, leading us to pretty much just remember one holistic face. We just file that complete face away in our brain in the section for remembering faces under Brenda from HR. So when we see an inverted photo of a face that we know, our fusiform face area has to work together with our object and our place recognition areas, like the lateral occipital cortex and the parahippocampal place area, respectively. And all of these things working together are how we figure out whether that upside down face is Brenda from HR or Bill Clinton or a bucket of blue crabs. If all of that is what's happening, then maybe the reason for the other race effect, the ORE, is because people process their own race using the face recognizing area of their brains, but they process the faces of other races using all three face object place areas together. To test that, researchers showed people inverted and normal faces from their own race and other races, and then they timed how long it took them to recognize each of these faces. They found that the configural hypothesis might be correct. 
When a white person looked at a black face, they took just as long to recognize it when it was right side up as when it was upside down, because they're processing it the same way each time. And that same white person recognized an upside down white person only a bit more quickly than they recognize an upside down black person. This new study took all of this one step further by taking about 100 white European students and attaching electrodes to their scalps before giving them the inverted face test. For half of them, the electrodes did absolutely nothing. But for the other half, the electrodes effectively knocked their facial recognition area offline temporarily. And the researchers found that the group that was zapped showed a reduction in their ability to recognize faces from their own race, minimizing that other race effect. And when the photos were inverted, the subjects recognized white faces, their own race, about as often as those from another race. It's pretty interesting. And I'll say that I'm personally invested in all of this because I have prosopagnosia, which is the inability, or in my case, the great difficulty in recognizing faces of any race. For a long time, I assumed that I was very socially awkward. And further, I assumed that I was a bad person who must not care about the people that I meet, or else I would make more of a conscious effort to remember what they look like. So I would try really, really hard when I met someone to memorize the key features about their face uh, so that I might recognize them when I meet them again. And when I inevitably failed to recognize them the next time I met them, I would beat myself up about it and feel really bad. I started to suspect that it might be more than just me being lazy or inconsiderate when I was about 20 and I had been dating and living with a man for several years who had slicked back hair and a goatee. Yes, he was an asshole, but that's not relevant to the story. Anyway, he picked me up after work one day and I hopped into his car and turned to look at him and I saw a complete stranger sitting in the driver's seat. Uh, I apologized profusely for getting into the wrong car and I climbed back out. He rolled down the window and shouted for me to come back. And that's when I realized that that was my boyfriend, but he had buzzed his hair and shaved off his goatee. And that was a dramatic change, for sure. But you have to understand that from my perspective, I was looking at a complete stranger who I had never seen before in my life, sitting next to me, who happened to have the same car as my boyfriend. (laughs) So after that, I started searching the internet, and I found a website from a person describing their own prosopagnosia. And it was like a weight lifted off of me. Like, I wasn't a bad person. I mean, at least I wasn't a bad person for that reason. Um, It's just that I had brain damage, basically. The part of my brain that recognized faces is there, but it's malfunctioning a bit. And I chalked it up as maybe the result of one of my childhood concussions or possibly something that has just been with me since birth. Those are two ways that researchers think people can get prosopagnosia. But it was thanks to this recent study that I fell down another rabbit hole and I learned that experts suspect that we start categorizing faces as distinct objects from other objects really early in our childhood, possibly like as infants. Um, which could be why if, for example, we are raised by and around white people, we put white faces into the face category while we don't put other races into that category. Studies suggest that this is able to be adjusted. People who spend a lot of time as an adult surrounded by people of another race from them, uh, from what they grew up with, like a white person moving to Japan after college, Uh, those people start to process those new faces as quickly as their own race. With that in mind, maybe I don't have prosopagnosia because of a concussion. Uh, If we build up that area of our brain from infancy, what if I just didn't see enough faces often enough to have a fully developed facial recognition area in my brain? It's not that I was kept in a cage in a basement for all of my youth, but I made it to about the age of 10 or 11 before anyone noticed that I was really (laughs) short-sighted, like literally, not figuratively short-sighted. I couldn't see shit. Uh, 
So I wonder if it's like learning a second language, you know, research shows that the people who have been speaking a second language from an early age are better at learning more languages after that because they've primed that part of their brain. So maybe I just got a late start developing my facial recognition skills and it's left me more or less permanently behind the rest of the class. Although, of course, the brain is very plastic and researchers have been able to improve face blindness with specialized training in some studies. So maybe there's hope for me. Anyway, I find all this terribly interesting. If you think you might have face blindness, you can head over to faceblind.org to learn more and you can even sign up to be a participant in future research through Dartmouth. And just know that you're not necessarily a bad person just because you don't recognize faces. And also, you're not a racist just because you only recognize faces from your own race. Sure, racism may play a role in all of this, but it's more likely to be one in which we've spent a very long time raising our children, particularly our white children, segregated from other races and exposed to television and magazines and movies and advertisements that almost exclusively featured white faces. As we improve the diversity of our neighborhoods and our media, maybe we will all get better at recognizing people from other races and we will see the other race effect effectively disappear. 